know the fight, but I expect the fight and uh, the execution, the defensive play, the base running play. Not acceptable when you're trying to claw back in it and find yourself in a ball game with a team that's that talented. They are very talented. You guys can see that top to bottom in the lineup, experienced, physical. Their arms did a good job. I know their starter, I think, had something go on. He came out of the game, but they're a very talented team. We had chances. Um, we've talked about playing clean. That was not clean enough. That one mistake with the bases loaded. Those are the things in a tight game like that that's going to bite you. And we have to learn from that. That's a tough way to learn. But, you know, Bass has played first base, and we work on that sort of thing basically every day in practice, and it didn't execute itself like we would have hoped. And then the base running play in the sixth inning, clearly a, <laughs> you fought all the way back and now you're right there in position and you've got some momentum and we completely handed the momentum back to them, which is, it's tough. I mean, Nander's trying to make something happen. He was not going to go on a ball to the corners and uh, he just took it upon himself to try it, which is a hard thing to explain. He's almost overdoing it to try to create something else in it. If you're one out, second and third there, you just survive and go to the next guy and maybe you have a, you have a shot. So tough. The two strike pitching, there were some pitches that we didn't quite finish guys with. And when they're physical and experienced and their, their pitch recognition was good, they, they put some good, good swings on the ball all night, not just in two strike counts, but throughout the course of the ball game. So they're good, very talented. They know what they're doing. They played a clean ball game. They beat us. Their hitting, did you feel like it was just execution on your guys' side or just kind of a combination of them being experienced and really good with a little bit of non-execution, I guess? It's a combination of that. And when you're not completely on the screws with your pitch execution, the physical older team like that, they make you pay. And it's a little louder. Sometimes people make you pay, but their payments were loud and full. So kudos to them. I mean, they, they played a really good baseball game. With the play in the first inning, the, or second inning, I'm sorry, the bases loaded play, it seemed like Nander was tossing in him, like, just to the bag? Or did, did you even get an explanation? Because there were two guys right there, and neither one of them reached for it. Well, you know, your first baseman needs to recognize, and I'm looking at it from a very difficult angle. It looked like it was clearly something the second baseman should handle. And I think Baz got hung up maybe thinking he should go get that ball. But – if he runs and gets that ball to try to get it to the pitcher cover, it's very difficult. So clearly the play from where I was watching looked like it should have been Nander coming in there and trying to get it to Bass. I told Bowmeister, even in that situation, when you see your first baseman is a little bit in jail, you can tell when we work on this. I know mean, you can't tell watching what just happened today, but the pitcher should communicate that I have the bag just so there's a bailout mechanism so even your second baseman could toss that ball to the pitcher because the guy did not get out of the batter's box real well. He got tied up, and the timing of the play allows for more. You have more time when the hitter doesn't get out of the box. So we had time to handle it. There were really two ways. Number one, probably Baz is he just gets over there, recognizes it more quickly, and then if Bowmeister maybe takes a little more charge around the around the bag, lets Baz know that hey, I've got this. You still might be able to get to the pitcher and be just fine. The pitcher clearly would beat the runner there. So very messy, uh, difficult play, and in a game of this evenness, like that was an even game. Um, those are the things that that hurt you. Overall, what did you see from Javon tonight? Transitioning from the windup to the stretch, we've got to figure that out. The moment he has to start executing out of the stretch, and we've seen it before, it hadn't been quite as dynamic. So that is the key. I think he gets into that stretch and it's not quite the same aggression. You can almost see the, the body language sometimes when he's in that windup, boy, it's here we go and it's coming at you and it's thunderous and then in the stretch I feel like sometimes he's feeling through it a little bit more um, so we, we talked about it after the ball game and that transition from that you know four or five at bats in the wind up and maybe you hope more to then when you have to go to the stretch immediately like the next few pitches are different because you're in a completely different mechanical uh, state when you're in the stretch so he'll get there uh, you know I thought his stuff was was okay but not as good in the in the stretch. And we tried to stretch him. Like we needed, you know what we went through Wednesday night. We needed him to lengthen it out, and we were trying to get him through that. 
to alleviate some of the length that we had to use out of the bullpen again. And that's why that one play, that would have gotten us off the field and maybe we can kind of survive and regroup. Obviously, you talked to him. He didn't have his best night, but do you think down the road this could be a really coachable moment for him? I mean, still a young guy, just couldn't regain, you know, after a couple tough at bats. Yeah, you know, he's figuring this out, you know. Um, how many starts last year? A couple, maybe. Two. Yeah. So this is this is still a little bit new. And then when you come in and you're out here on a Friday night like this, two weeks in a row, you know, at TCU and and here, I mean, there's just still a newness and a learning curve that that goes with it. I think he'll be just fine. But it is that the transition stuff. I feel like is still the key. I thought fastball okay. The secondary pitches came and went for him a little bit. But it is, it is a growth process, and we're going to have to have him go right back out there because the staff is comprised of the guys that haven't gained a lot of experience in, at this level. So they're going to have to go learn on the fly, and I, I do hope that they can process through good and bad. Last week he got to learn through a really good outing. Now he's out of there, and he's going to have to process you know, a tough one. That's part of, the, part of the game at this level and beyond. Trump did a really good job getting on base today. I think he got on base four out of the five at-bats that he had. Yeah, good, good at-bats. Tough kid. I, we trust him to go out there and play center field and feel like we can put him in any spot in the order. He competes and grinds out at-bats. He did it today. Benny Barrett grinded out some at-bats. We had some at-bats that were good that didn't have a lot to show for it, maybe. Um, but you know, the fight the fight was there. It just wasn't clean enough. It wasn't good enough. The fight, yes. Just the overall performance. No, Tibbs, some good swings. You can go up and down the lineup and some pretty good swings from just about everybody, but we couldn't get out of our own way. You mentioned Ben. You guys have been working him on both sides. Just how pleased were you to see his swings tonight? I loved it. He's a, he's a talented player. I told Lulu initially we knew we were going to need him on the mound, like desperately need him on the mound. So we kind of put the other stuff like on the back burner a little bit. And he still did all his batting practice and he would do his work offensively. But we wanted to make sure we were giving him plenty of opportunity to, to work on the mound. And the start at JU would, would tell you that, um, that we thought very highly of him. And we still do. So we thought maybe with the success he was having at the plate, feeling good, let's see if we can run him out there and maybe get a a good inning out of him on the, on the mound, just in a different state of mind, and he'll be he'll be just fine. But yeah, he's athletic, good good all around player. How important is it for tomorrow to get? You don't want to tax the bullpen anymore. I know you. What is the plan for tomorrow? Do you have one going in as far as the, the starter and Jamie will start right. And we kind of were letting Wednesday. We were trying to let him like feel another start and just get another start under his belt to get ready for tomorrow um, and we've got some young guys that are going to have to, to pitch it was great to see Dennison that was good stuff and that might have been the best he's been in his entire tenure here between the fall and the spring so we'll f figure it out I didn't look at the pitch totals and who's available but clearly there's going to be some guys that are down we hope Jamie can give us a good start and then we'll just we'll have to sort through it as, as we go and as a coach, when, when Nander, who's played a lot of baseball, makes a mistake like that, what, do, you, do you have to yell at him? Do you, do you yell at him? Do you know, do, he knows he made a, a big mistake in that moment. How do you make that a teaching moment well, for him and the team? I said, Nander, that's an unacceptable base running play. Once you make that maneuver back to the bag, you, you have to stay. That's it. End of story. There's really no teaching moment. on That, that was it. And I, he knew what he needed to do on the initial ball. Like, we were not going to run into an out of the plate in that situation. And that's just somebody that's trying to do too much. And it wasn't like a lack of – it was almost over effort, misguided effort to try to create when there's nothing to create on that type of play other than, you know, we created two outs for them at a moment where the, the, the pendulum had swung back to us. Just trying to do too much. But trying to do too much or not doing enough – those things equate to the same thing, and it's a lack of execution, and it, it really hurt. Doug was able to keep.